Okay, so welcome to part three. I have checked, this is part three, hopefully. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do in this part is add the um, sort of variables to this page, so they display the actual information, as opposed to what we have currently, which is just sort of a bit nothingy. So let's go to our profile page and let's add the username here. So what we want to do is output the first name and last name. If you remember from when I did the print underscore R, we have those in the sort of keys, first name and last name. So what we're going to do is add PHP echo user info something uh, semicolon quotes. What I'm going to do is just copy this because that's what we're going to be using sort of a lot of times, and I don't want to have to keep typing it out over and over. So. Um, See, PHP developers are lazy. Uh, that's why they do PHP. Um, so we have, we want the first name here, so first name, and then after this we want just a space, and then we want the last name. And it might make a bit more sense to have PHP output the space, so then you could have like uh, that. Um, it's a bit shorter, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going with that because uh, I just am. <laughs> it's up to you, basically. Um, so then we want the username. So paste that there again and username. Gender is a bit different. Um, we want. We need to check if gender is one. And if it is one, we want to output male. If it's not, female. So we're going to use the ternary operator here. So we're going to be checking a condition. So we're going to be checking if this is equal to um, one. Um, if it is, we want to output male. If it's not, we want to output female. That's the name of an email thingy. That's female. Um, so what that's doing there is just checking this against one. If it is one, we get male. If it's not, we get female. So, I mean, I've covered this ternary thing in, log in my logic video before. So if you don't really understand what's going on, you should probably go and watch that. So email next is just the email and location is just location. So you can see why we had that as thing before. So if we had if we didn't use that and set up all those aliases, we'd have user info, user location. So obviously we know that this this is the user's location because it's called user info. So that's why we did that. Um, and then finally in this paragraph tag down here, we want the about me type section, which is just about. So if we reload our page now, you can see we get all of Bob's information. One thing I haven't done yet is the title, which I will just go back and do. Um, I, ha I set it up so it's say like usernames profile. So here we want this again, and we want the username. If I just reload the page now, you see we get Bob's profile. I suppose you could do first name. Anyway, it's up to you basically. Um, so if we just go to the other profile, so we get my name and all of the sort of my information. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the view profile page. Um, and now what we have is basically what I demonstrated uh, in the first part. So we have a user list, and we can click on either of these users and get their profile. Um, and then the edit profile page is going to edit that information, which is what we're going to do next. So what I actually do is just open. Um, my profile up in a new tab, like so, so I can demonstrate that editing the profile actually changes the information easily anyway without having to like, go backwards and forwards. So open up the edit profile page, because that's what we'll be creating next. Um, and what we need to do on this page is sort of the most complicated so far anyway. So let's go to the edit profile page. Um, in here, I'll just explain this HTML a bit I suppose. Uh, at the top is where we're going to be processing everything as usual, so the form will be processed up here. And then in this block here, we'll be displaying any messages, um, including errors. And then obviously this is just the HTML form, and we need to uh, we need to get the information that we have already uh, and put it into these values so that we don't have to type out their current information if we want to keep it the same. So the first thing we need to do is use the fetch user info function again. So I suppose I could technically just go and copy that, couldn't I? So yeah, I'll just copy these two lines here and paste them here. So we're including the core file and then we're calling the fetch user info function. 
although we're not using a get variable anymore this will be the current logged in user which we simulated with the session so this is the current logged in user so now we need to just display this information uh, in these three fields and um, notice that we're not allowing them to edit everything because their name shouldn't change their gender I suppose techni technically could change but well <laughs> yeah you can allow them to change whatever you like but just for this to keep it a bit more simple I'm just allowing them to change their email address their location and their about me anything else is fairly unlikely to um, actually be changed so okay so um, the user info function if you remember it returns um, um, sort of an array of information um, one of those is the email address so what we're going to do here is just do php echo um, user info email we don't need to use HTML entities because the way we validate the email address it won't allow any sort of quotes or anything so yep uh, the same goes for the location we don't allow any um, anything bad in there so let's just do echo um, user info uh, location and then in the text area it's slightly different because you need it in between the text area tags sort of here not like in a value tag um, I might have a video on forms or something so if you are not sure what I'm doing with the HTML I suppose you could go and watch that um, but I'm not going to be covering it in this video because it's already getting too long so okay so inside the text area tags we need to do PHP echo user info um, about like so so if we reload our page now we should see my profile information uh, and notice these BR tags the reason these appear is that um, when we submit the form we convert any new line characters into line breaks so that when it's displayed on the page it shows up with new lines um, and you probably saw that when I um, had the array output. If I just view the oh if I view the page source, not the selection source, and bring this down here. You can see that here is my um like about me section in between these two um, where's the first one? Oh yeah, in between these two P tags so closing and opening. You can see these line breaks here. So uh the reason we have those on um well we put those in as we save to the database instead of as we display because then we would it just less calls to the function that adds them so I suppose it technically it should be a bit more efficient um, but it does cause a bit of a problem here because we get these BR tags in our text area um, which is also technically invalid which is why we have four errors so what we need to do is um, remove them and also because we're not really allowing any HTML tags we can just use the strip tags function here. So if we just do strip tags of that and reload that, you see they're basically gone and the new lines have stayed intact. So um, basically, people will be viewing profiles more often than they'll be editing them. So um, sort of the inefficiency of this is less than it is of this. So that's why we're doing it that way around. Uh, well, that's the logic I had behind it, to be honest, it's basically not going to make much difference either way, but yeah um, okay, and because we'll be applying HTML entities to any sort of input um, there won't actually be anything that looks like a another HTML tag so it, o it should only remove the BR line breaks um, but well, I suppose we could see about that later on anyway, so that's our information um, um, in the sort of boxes, basically at the moment again obviously it doesn't do anything when we click update if we just if I just change something it just shows the current information again so uh, what we need to do now is check if the form has been submitted and then process it up here so I'm going to do that between here for a reason you'll see later so to check if the form has been submitted we need to check if is set post email so we're checking for each of the fields post uh, and 
post about. So if they're all set, we're going to do something. And if you remember, just these like keys just co uh, correspond to these names. Um, don't worry about this CSS code, by the way. That's just to make the form look a bit less awful. <laughs> um, but that's not considered part of the video. Um, neither is any of the HTML. But obviously, you can design your page how you like. Um, I'm not going to be providing like any videos on CSS or anything. So, um, but yeah, I'm trying to cover the PHP only. So anyway, um, if the form has been submitted, we need to check for some errors, and we we'll do that using do do that in the same way that we always do by defining an errors array. Uh, we define it as empty by default, and then we need to check a few error conditions. Uh, we're only going to be checking two, just to keep things a bit simple. Um, we're going to first check the, so we'll make sure the username, not the username, the email address is valid. And we'll do that using the filter var function. We've done this before again, so I'm not going to explain it in too much detail. But we're going to check if filter var post email. So the first parameter of this parameter of this function is the sort of string you want to process or the variable variable you want to process. And the second parameter is the mode, uh, which in this case is going to be filter valid date email except, except filter is spelt right so um, that will return true if the email address is valid and false if not so we're checking it against false and if it is false we want to add something to our errors array and that something is going to be um, the email address you entered is not valid Okay, so that's that error condition error checked. I'm going to do something similar for the location, except we're going to be using a regular expression uh, to make sure that it's only sort of letters, numbers, or a space. So what we're going to do here is do if preg match p reg match. Uh, first parameter of this is the pattern, and the second parameter is the string you want to apply it to, which is post location. Um, and this function returns the number of matches, um, which is either 0 or 1. So if this is 0, it means that it hasn't matched and it's failed. So in that case, we're going to be adding an error. Uh, and now the pattern that we need to match. Um, I'm not going to cover regular expressions in too much detail, but I'm just going to sort of tell you the pattern, basically. Um, it has to be delimited. With, I'm not sure if I said that right. Um, it has to be, uh, well, yeah, it has to have the same character at the start and at the end. Not really sure why, but it just does. Um, then you can supply uh, pattern modifiers after the final one. And in this case, we're going to be supplying i, which makes it case insensitive. Um, and the pattern, the actual sort of core bit of the pattern we're going to be matching, is the start of the string and the end of the string. And the actual sort of middle of the string has to match something in square brackets, which is like a character class. So it has to ma be made up of these characters. And the character characters we're allowing is A to Z, 0 to 9, and spaces. Uh, and also you have to specify the length, which we're just going to say for this is it has, to be, it has to be more than 0. So it has to be one or more characters, which is what the plus means. Um, you could technically check the length of this as well, because remember in the database we had the limit of 12. So I suppose you could set like 1 to 12 here. But just for this, we're just going to leave it as plus. Um, I don't want to get too bogged down in endless validation. But you can check this as sort of rigorously as you like. Um, as long as it's secure, then it won't cause any problems. People might get a bit annoyed if they enter something really long and it gets clipped off, but that's up to you if you want to check that. So we want to add in errors. We want to add an error, basically. That's the error is going to be um, your location must only contain A to Z naught to nine and spaces which might not make much sense to people but yep okay so that's actually it for our validation so i'm going to end this part here and we will continue in the next part so thanks for watching and join me in the next part